I hope everybody had a good Christmas. Um, I know a lot of you are probably thinking we're looking at a Christmas video here when uh, Christmas is over, but it was just a couple days ago, and uh, it kind of fit in with my message today. Um, we're going to talk today about family, and uh, the uh, video showed what um, the traditions were at Christmas time of this particular family, and I'm sure you guys all have um, traditions that you do as well, and we do, we do about the same thing every year, but um, it, it all centers around family, and uh, I hope yours did too. Um, I think for most people, um, Christmas does center around family. We had um, uh, Christmas with my uh, family up in Delaware, and we had Christmas with uh, Leslie's family here in Marion. We had Christmas with our immediate family just at home, and just several different gatherings and, and parties, but it was all about family. Um, and uh, it, it kind of made me think about what I was going to be preaching about today, which kind of led into this message. Um, you know, with our families, um, and I noticed this a lot the last few days, uh, we just um, have a lot of the same uh, characteristics um, as other family members. Um, we look alike. A lot of us look alike. I noticed the other day that my brother Dan um, has almost the exact same mannerisms and kind of speech pattern that my brother Mike has. And uh, my brother Mike's in Florida right now living down there, and I haven't seen him for a while, but I was watching my brother Dan as he was talking the other day. Mm -hmm. It just it made me think of my brother Mike, because there was just so much the same. And, um, it's kind of that way. Um, we have um, uh, bloodlines, you know, that are followed. We have DNA. We have uh, uh, characteristics that are passed on from one generation to the next generation. Um, and I kind of want to look at that today, and I want to look at um, uh, God's family and how God um, has started his family. And, um, in a family, uh, we have good and bad um, positions, I guess I'm wanting to say. I'm not wanting to say uh, that we have, um, I guess I am wanting to say that. We have a lot of times we have the, the dark sheep of the family that people talk about. And uh, there's nothing we can do about that, you know? We, we, every family has its, its uh, good side and bad side. And for the most part, there's nothing we can do about that. Now, I don't mind talking about this, actually, because that is my position in our family. And, um, and it started at a very young age. Uh, I was pretty wild and um, unruly, uh, especially as a teenager. And um, my sister, Tina, happens to be here today. And uh, I will say this. Um, I really put her through a lot. Like back in high school days, uh, she had the, uh, the privilege of being a freshman in high school when I was a senior in high school. And uh, my senior year in high school, I had reached about my uh, peak of my uh, wild unruliness. I showed up day one with a mohawk, as did, uh, as did three or four of my friends, and we terrorized that school. I got a... Um, I got a high school diploma only because the uh, school board decided they, they did not want to deal with me the next year, and they just decided to move me on along. So uh, uh, she didn't have any choice in the matter, it's just how things fell out. But she was stuck with that and stuck with sitting in class and hearing my name on the uh, announcements all the time as the principal or Somebody of authority was looking for me every day for one reason or another, but uh, she had no choice in that. It just happened to be because we were family. Um, and I want to talk to you about God's family and uh, where God began his family. And I'm going to start with uh, scripture um, out of Genesis. We're going to go to uh, Genesis 12. We're going to read Genesis 12, 1 through 4. In my Bible, it's page 16, so we're going way to the beginning. Genesis 12, 1 through 4. And what this is, is this is when God spoke to Abraham for the first time. And this is what God, this is what Scripture tells us. It says that the Lord had said to Abram, Leave your country, your people, and your father's household, and go to the land I will show you. 
I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. So Abram left as the Lord had told him. Um, first thing I want to say in, in reading in reading that scripture is, Abraham's 75 years old at this point in time. <laughs> You know, we, at least I, I do, I think this. Um, when I'm 75, I don't think I'm going to be called by God. I think I'm going to be retiring from my calling from God. Um, maybe even way before 75, you know. So here's this man, he's 75 years old. Um, he has no children. And God is telling him that he's going to be a great nation. He's going to be a blessing to all peoples. Um I, I love the promises that he's being given here. It says, I, I will, will bless those who bless you, and I will curse those who curse you. Um, and I will make you into a great nation, and all peoples of the earth will be blessed by you. What an amazing thing that God himself says to this one man. Um, the other thing that stands out is he doesn't tell him where he's going. He just says, pack up and leave. Um, I'll, I'll show you where you're going later. Just pack up and leave everything that you know. Um, and it says he did. You know, what tremendous faith. Um, and as we're going to look at God's uh, family here and um, the bloodlines of God's family and how God created his family, um, I, I want to, and, and I, I don't want to embarrass anyone, and it, it's, it's, it's not going to be painful, and I, I promise you, but I'm going to ask a few of the guys to come up here because um, you're going to represent some people. Um, Michael, would, would you be Abraham for me? If you can come up. You're, you're at the beginnings of this bloodline. I just need you to stand right here. This is Abraham, a great man of faith. As Abraham went along his walk, God came back to him and, and, and spoke to him again. Um, God took Abraham outside in the middle of the desert, in the middle of this journey that he was on, and he says, Look up at the heavens and count the stars, if indeed you can. So shall your offspring be. And again, this is a man who has no children. He's uh, up in years. He's past uh, uh, childbearing age, and so is his wife. And God is telling him that uh, he's going to have more descendants, more offspring than the stars in the sky. Later, uh, God comes back to uh, Abraham again, and he says to him, as he's showing him uh, the land that he's promised for him, he says to him, To your descendants I give this land, the land of the Canaanites, Kenizzites, Cadmonites, Hittites, Perjacites, Raphaites, Amorites, Canaanites, Girgashites, and Zebedites. He, again, has no children. So he's promised him that he's going to be, uh, he's going to make his name great. He's going to be um, uh, the beginnings of a great nation. All the peoples of earth are going to be blessed by him. Your offspring are going to be more numerous than the stars in the sky. And I'm giving you this land here for, for, your, for your offspring to inhabit, your descendants to inhabit. It's the best land that there is. And um, still has no children. Uh, Abraham continues in his, in his walk with God, and he follows wherever God is, is telling him to lead. And in Genesis 21.5, it tells us that Abraham and Sarah have a son, Isaac. Abraham's 100 years old when he has his son, Isaac. Um, Ray, will you be Isaac? <laughs> He's like, oh man, you called on me. Can you face that way, Michael? I'm going to have you face that way. This is Abraham. This is your father. If you come around here, Ray, just put your hands on your dad's shoulders. <laughs> Abraham and Isaac. Isaac walked with God, and God blessed Isaac, and he gave him a family. And Isaac had a son, Jacob. Um, Scott.
Scott, will you be Jacob? Maybe. Will you be Jacob? Okay. <laughs> We've got Jacob coming up. All right. Now, you're going to come up and put your hands on your dad's shoulders. And you guys just straighten out just a little bit more there. There you go. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Three pillars of the Christian faith stand before you there. Um, Jacob walked with God, and uh, God blessed Jacob and blessed him with a large family. Uh, Jacob had 12 sons. His 12 sons became the 12 tribes of Israel. When the nation of Israel was formed, each of the bloodlines, each of the 12 sons' families inherited specific pieces of ground. Uh, when Joshua led the Israelites um, on into the land that God had promised for them, uh, each of the sons of Jacob got their specific pieces of ground. One of the sons of Jacob, his name was Judah. Um, Paul, we be Judah. <laughs> Judah's coming up. You put your hands on your dad's shoulders there. This is Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Judah. And that is an exact order of bloodlines without skipping any generations. Um, the bloodline of Judah um, led to King David. A um, couple generations down the line, but King David was a direct descendant of Judah. Um, John, will you be King David? Okay, we have King David coming up. And if you would, just put your hands on Judah's shoulders. Uh, this is God's family as he's forming it. This is his bloodline from Abraham. Um, the Bible, we could have started with Adam, but I didn't figure we had enough guys here. Um, <laughs> the Bible tells us the complete genealogy all the way from Adam. From Adam to Noah, from Noah um, to Abraham. There was nine generations from Noah to Abraham. I, I do know that. I looked that up and I thought, oh, you know, how many guys are we going to have here this morning? So, so I started with Abraham. I could have started with Adam. Um, but uh, this is King David, the same King David who uh, slew Goliath uh, with a sling and a stone, the very same one. Um, King David is a direct descendant from Judah all the way back to Abraham. Um, scripture tells us uh, in 2 Samuel 7.16, it tells us that God spoke directly to David and told him, your house and your kingdom will endure forever before me. Your throne will be established forever. Amazing promise that God gave to David. Um, this is a time where when you became king, first of all, you had to you know, keep um, friends very close to you because even people within the palace and within um, your own kingdom wanted to kill you because they wanted someone else to be king. Usually... Uh, if one person was king and uh, it went to his son to become the king, it usually didn't go much further than that before another family took over being king. And usually what they did then, when they became king, they would kill all of the offspring of the previous king's family so that one of them wouldn't grow up and try to claim the throne back and come and kill you. Um, so for God to come to King David at that time and say, you're... Um, your descendants will sit on the throne forever, the throne of Israel forever, uh, was an amazing thing for him to say to David. And uh, where David's bloodline leads is it leads to Jesus. And I've already asked him, and I'm probably going to embarrass him, but Dewey, will you come up? You're going to be Jesus. <laughs> All right, you can put your hands on. King David's shoulders. Um, God established his family. He started with telling Abraham that he was going to be a nation, a great nation. Um, he blessed him and did give him his son Isaac. Isaac had a son Jacob. He had 12 sons. The, the nation grew from there. Um, God, uh, or in the, in the Old Testament anyway, I do want to say this. Um, Isaiah prophesied about Jesus 
a thousand years um, before he was born. And he said that a shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. Jesse um, was the father uh, of King David, stood between Judah and King David. In Revelations 5.5, 5, it says, uh, Do not weep. See, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has triumphed. Um, Jesus is known as and prophesied as the lion of the tribe of Judah. He comes directly, he's the descendant directly through um, Judah, son of Jacob. Uh, he is the, uh, the root of David. King David is uh, directly in his family tree. Uh, the bloodlines are perfect. Every promise God made in the Old Testament, every prophecy spoke of in the Old Testament about King David or about Jesus, all were fulfilled. And all came to pass with this bloodline. And, it was, and it's perfect. It's perfect in how God began to form his family. Um, everything about it is perfect, except for one thing. I'm not in it. I'm not in it. I'm not a descendant of any of these guys. Their bloodline is perfect, but, I, but I'm not a part of it. I can't get in. I'm not, I'm not able to get in. These guys can't let me in. They're connected in their bloodline. And the only way that I can possibly get in is to cry out to God. And I need God to make a way for me to be able to come in. And I ask God to make a way for me to come into the bloodlines here. And as soon as Jesus takes his hands away from David and goes to the cross. He makes a way for me to come in and be a part of this family. When, as soon as he sheds his blood on the cross, the bloodlines are opened up for everyone. Until he does that, I have no way to join into God's family. If he doesn't do this, I have no way of ever joining into God's family. I'm not part of that plan, and I'm not part of that bloodline. So nobody here is. But with Jesus on the cross, with his arms outstretched, we're all invited into this family. Thank you, brother. I'll let you guys all kind of see. With the sacrifice that Christ made on the cross we have access to become a part of God's family. And I just want to talk about that. Um, and talk about the meaning behind that. Um, I texted Gary yesterday uh, about something and asked him a question. And the text that he sent me back, Gary humbly, by the way. Gary, you all know Gary. Um, Gary texted me back, and what his text said was, it didn't say yes or no. It said, I got your back. It meant yes, but it said, I got your back. And I was thinking about that, and I was thinking about um, how that is with family. Is it not? We're a family here. With the sacrifice that Christ made on the cross, I have the ability to enter into God's family and become a child of God. As I become a member of God's family, my family is everyone who has accepted Christ as Lord and Savior. Everyone who's living today that has accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior, they're my brothers and sisters. They're my family. Everyone who came before this generation of people are also now my family. And anyone in the future who accepts Jesus as Lord and Savior, become a part of my family. So you guys are my family. As I texted Gary yesterday, it was a perfect response for him to, to text back. We're family. Gary's not just my friend. You know, we're family. It's different, you know? JT, you're not just my friend. You're my brother. We're family. It's different. Jesus said... Um, 
the world will know that you're mine by how you love each other. You know, he commanded his disciples to love each other. And, and then he said, the world will know that you're mine by how you love each other. Because it'll look different. Your group of people uh, gathered together will look different than other groups of people. Because you'll have full love for each other. You'll have each other's backs. Um, I'll just go back to my uh, story of my sister, Tina. Um, as I uh, tormented her through high school, um, here's the uh, here, here's kind of the beauty in that. Uh, although it would, I'm sure it was. I was about to say probably was. Uh, it, it definitely was wrong of me um, to always ask things of her, but I did as well. Even though I was tormenting her, and um, <laughs> she uh, didn't quite know how to take that. Um, uh, at the same time. Uh, she was the person who uh, wrote me most of my notes to get, keep me from getting in trouble. Um, she had my mom's signature down really well, um, which might not be good for me to, to share, but, but there's a purpose in sharing that. Um, she helped me with you know, homework assignments and things that I never did. And, um, so even though I was tormenting her and she didn't deserve that, she had my back. Because that's what family does. Right? When we're a family. Right or wrong, you know? <coughs> my brother at times can do some things, you know, but he's my brother. <coughs> you know? I'm going to have his back. Um, we need to be that way together. And, and the beauty in the joining God's family um, we have our sins forgiven, and we have uh, salvation through Jesus' sacrifice. We have um, eternal life in the kingdom of heaven. Uh, that, that's what's most important um, for anyone uh, to, to come to know and to come to accept and, and to gain from the life of this world. But there's a big part of, of being a part of God's family that I think that we don't look at. Um, I'm supposed to take on, be able to take on, the characteristics of the great men of God who came before me. You know, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Judah, Jesse, King David. Um, all of them were great men of God. Uh, they're all part of my family. We somehow God makes it work out that we now have the same DNA, and not only that, but all of the great men that came, of God that came before me, I believe as we become part of God's family, I believe they have our back too. I believe we're we're able to draw something from each of them, and I think that they want to give something to each of us. Um, Abraham was a great man of faith, incredible faith. When my faith is uh, lacking, when I need help with my faith, um, I should be able to draw on that. I should be able to draw on the great faith of Abraham and strengthen my faith. When I'm uh, scared, <laughs> something is fearful in front of me, uh, something very worrisome in front of me, I should be able to draw on the courage of David. You know, went out to the battlefield and slew Goliath with the sling and a stone. And um, we got to remember that as, as he slew Goliath, um, I don't believe there was anyone on the Phil. I know that there was nobody on the Philistine side of the, of the, um, of the battlefield that believed that was ever going to happen? Well, I don't think there was anybody on the Israelite side either that ever thought that was going to happen. <laughs> Just being honest, you know? Thousands of warriors stood there day after day and refused to go out and face Goliath. This little shepherd boy goes walking out there with a sling or a stone. They're just, you know, they're not expecting that to happen. But God made sure that happened. And, and, and we have to remember that David took Goliath down 
not uh, to save his nation or to save his country or to save <coughs> his family. It had nothing to do with his immediate family. David heard him talking bad about his God. That's why he stepped out there. He said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should be able to stand here and blaspheme our God like this? And he walked out there and, and took him down just because he was talking bad about our, our God that we worship. Um, Daniel, when he went into the lion's den, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, when they went into the fiery furnace, we all, we all take our turns going into the fiery furnace. We do. Life is just that way. You know? We, um, we need to draw upon our family members as a child of God, and we need to draw strength from them. We need to draw from each other as a family and draw strength from each other as we face these things in life. Um, Jesus said that it was not going to be easy in this world. Um, he also said, take heart because I've overcome this world. There will come a day uh, when he either takes me home or he returns. You know, either way, uh, you know, either way I'm going to be with him for all eternity. But uh, tomorrow I've got to go back to work. Tomorrow I've got to go back out into the world. And as we go through these lives that we're in, I think we have to um, really take hold of who we are as a child of the Most High God and where we fit in God's family. Because if you, um, you can ask a lot of different people, what, what's the meaning of this whole book? What's the meaning of the book? What's the number one topic? What, you know, what's this all book all about? I would tell you it's about God forming his family. I would tell you that the whole thing is about God forming his family. From creating Adam from the dirt of the ground, forming him and breathing life into him, all the way through to sending his son. It's all about forming his family. It's about creating a people that he is going to spend all eternity with. His people. And uh, in, in sending his son, he opened that up to us, not just the Israelites. But um, I, believe that, I believe all of Scripture is about that. It's God forming his family. His eternal family. I think that's all important to God, how we treat each other and how we act with each other. Um, if we've truly accepted Christ as Lord and Savior in our lives, we should be able to take on a, um, a mentality like Daniel did when he went into the lion's did. I, I believe he looked at it this way. I believe many great men of the Bible looked at many things this way. Um, if the lion's eating, he's going home to spend eternity with God because that was just part of God's plan in his life. Or God's going to show up and save him. Either way, he's going to have victory. Either way, it's victory. I think a lot of times we... Um, I think a lot of times we don't look at things that way. And I think a lot of times we uh, we have fear of the outcome of things. We fear the giants in our lives. We fear the unknowns. And we back away from those things. And uh, I just think in these lives that we have on this earth, if we draw upon the uh, strengths and the characteristics of all of the uh, great men that have gone before us and our fellow Christians, our brothers and sisters who are here right now, um, I think God made it that way so that we can get through this life. I think that was all part of His plan for each one of us if we can get through this life. And I'm sure, uh, you know, nobody here even has to tell me. You know, we're all always going through stuff. So I know there's people here that are going through stuff. Um, 
And we have a God that wants to step into that. He wants to step into that. He wants to step into that through uh, examples that he's given you of the lives of other people. He wants to step into that through your brothers and sisters here. He wants to step into that situation, whatever it might be that you're going to right now. And he wants you to have help through your family. Um, this family. Um, I had a video I was going to play, but I don't... Um, I don't think I'm going to do that right now. I think I'm going to have Don and the band maybe come back up. Um, I think maybe if... Uh, I think maybe what we'll do is... Um, as I kind of close us in some prayer time... Maybe we can just uh, play lightly behind us, but maybe, um, I don't know, maybe uh, maybe we can do the uh, Forever Rain song again. Okay. I love that song. Um, let's pray with me here. Father, we come before you and give you thanks and praise for this time that we've had together today. We thank you forming the family. We thank you for the promises that you gave to Abraham. We thank you for the promises that you fulfilled. Every promise and every prophecy in the Bible you have made true. And we can count on that. And we can count on those promises working in our lives. Pray that you help everyone here come to look at David and Daniel and all of the great men of the Old Testament and, and just look at them as part of their family. And I pray whenever our faith is lacking that you just help us to remember Abraham. Help us to remember Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego when they refused to bow down to the king and instead said, we'll go into the fiery furnace. And help us to remember that you met them there. The scripture says they came out and never even smelled like smoke. Thank you for that complete protection that we know we can have in you. And when we have fear in our lives, I pray we're able to look at the life of David and we're able to think about the giant that he faced. And that we can boldly go forward and face the giants that we have in our lives. We can draw upon that strength. knowing that you are with us. We thank you for making a way for us to be able to come before you as your children. Making that way for us through the cross and opening up the bloodlines of your family for each of us. For scripture tells us for all who believe that Jesus was the Son of God, died on the cross for forgiveness of their sins and rose again. For all who believe that, they will be saved. kingdom will reign forever. Your kingdom will reign forever. We look forward to being a part of that and being in your kingdom and worshiping you forever. We love you.